In these next few videos, we're going to learn about the supply curve. And in this first one, we're going to start with how and why goods make it to the market, what determines how many goods a supplier will bring. And so again, we can go back to our original demand curve. We discussed three ways of explaining demand. One is mathematically, one is verbally, and one is graphically. Mathematically, we'll start with this very, very simple equation. Quantity supplied is equal to P. Verbally, we'll look at this chart, which shows at a price of zero, none will be supplied. At one dollar, one unit will be supplied. At four dollars, four units will be supplied. At seven dollars, seven units will be supplied. So for every dollar price, suppliers will bring one to the market. And then we can do it graphically, like we talked about before. And this will start out with quantity on the x-axis, price on the y-axis. And we can determine at different prices. We can plot them out based on our chart and based on the mathematical equation. At a price of zero, zero will be supplied. At a price of ten, ten will be supplied. At a price of three, three will be supplied. And at a price of eight, eight will be supplied. And then we can draw our supply curve through this. And the supply curve, again, is simply a graphical representation of how many units the supplier is willing to bring to the market at different prices. And what determines that? You know, again, well, why does the supply curve slope upwards in price quantity space? What determines why it'll bring 10 units when the price is $10, but only 3 units when the price is $3? And the answer to that is the more of something that we want, the more other things we must give up, and those other things become more valuable to us. So again, if we want to create more tires, that means rubber has to be uh, rubber labor energy has to be transferred from one area to another area to tires in order for us to, to have more tires. And those first things are not that valuable to us relative to the things we give up later on. So again, the least valuable things that we have or uses for rubber are sacrificed first and then more valuable uses as we produce more tires. And graphically we can look at this and we can see that the marginal cost, the purple area, represents the marginal cost of producing the first unit. It's one dollar to produce the first unit of whatever this good is. To produce two units, it's going to be two dollars. Three units is three, four, five, and on down the line. Each successive unit, we incur a higher marginal opportunity cost of resources used to produce whatever good this is. And again, that's because we have to give up other things and they become increasingly more important to us. So the supply curve represents the marginal opportunity cost of resources that are used to produce whatever good this is. In this case here, we'll look and we'll see that a the third unit, the marginal cost is $3 to produce that unit. And that's therefore a firm has to get at least $3 in order to produce that. If somebody is willing to pay $7 for the third unit, a supplier is willing to supply that good to the market because they're receiving more than what it costs them to produce that third unit. However, they're not willing to accept $3 for the eighth unit because it costs $8 in order to produce that eighth unit. So the marginal cost incurred by a producer for that eighth unit is $8, and if somebody is only willing to pay three, they're not going to bring that to the market. So they're unwilling to supply any quantity below the supply curve. They're willing to supply any quantity above the supply curve. The purple shaded area then is unwilling to supply. Now again, why is that the case? Because variable costs are the sum of marginal costs. So if it, the firm is producing 10 units, the total variable cost to that firm is the area under the supply curve. It's not going to supply something where it can't cover its variable cost. It's got to cover at least its variable cost and then it will bring more to the market. We'll be discussing that later on in a video on cost. So again, it's unwilling to supply anything within the purple area because it's not able to cover its variable cost at a price that's in that purple area. Now, when we look at a price of five and a quantity of five, this is the total revenue that the firm receives for those five units. They sell five units at five dollars a piece, that's twenty five dollars as total revenue. Of that total revenue, again, half of that is the variable cost to the firm. So twelve one half the base times the height, one half five times five is twenty five, so it's twelve fifty. That is the variable cost of the firm. The green area then represents the producer surplus. This is the gain to the producer for producing five units of goods, selling it at twenty at five dollars a piece for a total revenue of twenty five dollars. 
On the next video, we're going to look at movement along a supply curve and movement of the supply curve. So this is the end of this first video.